Yeah, yeah, sure. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me for this um, for this webinar. So uh, today I will talk about I will talk about how we can use AI and transformers to detect climate risk uh, in financial reports. So uh, you can go to the next next slide. So this is the agenda. So first, I will briefly introduce you how we can use the safe environment because, you know, data science is something, but how we can use data science in like a bank and how we can coordinate with the business and the IT. So that's why we use the safe methodology. And in a second time, I will talk about the project about climate risk. So quickly, um, I work in uh, I work as a data scientist in B, uh, BPI France. BPI France is uh, the biggest bank in France to finance the climate, uh, the climate um, change and climate transitioning, but also all of the all of the startups in France. And right now they have like a, a, a number of about 40 billion euros over the next four years to help uh, companies in France to uh, to emit less pollution or to improve their environment uh, performance. And a little bit about myself, which is in the next slide. Uh, I'm a PhD researcher in France, so I started my PhD back in Fudan and now I'm in Paris one student. Uh, I focus on finance, the climate and the Chinese economy. I work for uh, the bank for a year and on the same time I work for another agency in London where I did like over, over, over 20 data science projects over the past three years. And when I was in Shanghai, I wrote two textbooks one about AI and TensorFlow and another one about R, about uh, data analysis. And uh, yeah, let's begin with how we can coordinate data science project in, uh, in a bank. So I don't know if you're familiar with the Agile method, but here we use the Scaled Agile framework, which is how we coordinate and manage project between IT and, um, and the business. So how we do it is basically we have what we call um, um, an increment which takes about 10 weeks and for every 10 weeks then we 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 need to make projects so basically every 10 weeks the product manager the product owner and the business they confront themselves to say okay yeah we have this uh, use case we have this use case and this use case and then they talk with each other and say okay then this team will be in charge of this project this team will be in charge of this use case and then we have 10 weeks um to implement it and this 10 weeks is called uh, the PI program increment and this uh, this PI is divided into five sprints of two weeks so basically we need to write tasks and we need to do those tasks every two weeks and uh, in the end of the PI then we meet all together all of the IT team so we have like more we are over 100 people and we do what we call a system demo where we show our work on a funny way you know we record videos or we, we make some jokes or those kind of stuff to show the other team, hey guys, this is what we have done over the past uh, 10 weeks. This is great because we can do a lot of projects. We can deliver a lot of uh, new features and um, and uh, business value for, for the bank. And at the same time, we can develop from A to Z the product. And we are in charge of deploying and maintaining the project. Uh, the, the product, let's say we develop an API, then we need to deploy it. Uh, we need to deploy it and maintain it. The shortcoming of this uh, of this um, methodology is we only have 10 weeks to run a project. And if the business that doesn't want to carry on or they don't have the budget to do it, then we stop. So, so sometimes we don't we can, we need to uh, make sure we finish within these 10 weeks. We cannot go to 11 weeks because it's another PI. So we need to uh, make sure we we need to deliver the the, the result and sometimes we cannot go deeper into the topic so bear in mind this is very important to know how safe work and agile works because this is mainstream now in big companies and uh, now let's talk about uh, the project so i had 10 weeks to carry on this project so, uh, it's in the next slide yeah so um what about this project so you know a bank uh, the purpose of a bank is to finance loan and uh, to finance loan, they need to assess the risk of paying back uh, the, um, the loan. And, uh, you know, the traditional method, they don't include the environmental risk when they compute the riskiness of a client. And um, with the climate change, it's becoming more and more important to include those uh, environmental risks to assess if a client faces some uh, external risk that can 
avoid him to pay back the loan. And there is uh, the survey by the climate that by the climate bank said, okay, now more and more companies face external weather condition or um, biodiversity loss that will impact their business in the long, in the short and long run. So that's why the business asks us, hey guys, how can we include those kind of risk into our um, into our model, risk model? But the problem is, how can you evaluate the risk? You know, you can go uh, you can go on Google say, yeah, I want to uh, include climate risk into our model. There is no data for that, or there is no proxy. So the solution we found that the business found is like in the US, um, every large company needs to release what we call the 10K feelings. And in these 10K feelings, this is financial report, they have to mention risk, but some of them are like general risk and some of them are uh, risk related to the environment. And the idea was to develop a tool to extract those sentences related to the environment and then in the end to develop a score. So uh, you can go to the next slide. We'll show you that's a 10K report. So basically a 10K report, as I said, is a report that every large companies, you know, if you go to the SEC website, this is the Security Exchange Commission, you tap Alphabet, uh, Microsoft, Amazon, they all have their own 10K report. And within this 10K report, there is a specific section. And the section is the risk factor. This is our target. And <clears throat> within this paragraph, so this is a big, big, like it's a, a big uh, part. Some of them are like five pages. Some of them are like 20 pages. And um, within this uh, report, actually, you can see like uh, at the bottom, you see at the bottom, this is just an example of how, how we can find uh, the 10K report on the SEC website. We have uh, the blue, if you, can, if you can see the red uh, cycle, this is what we call the main risk. The company has to summarize the main risk at the top, and then they have paragraph, they have paragraph where they detailed why they believe this is a risk. And you know, some of them are the, some of them just write ten risk, ten risk. Some of them write twenty risk, or on average, most of company write fifty risk, uh, fifty risks per report. And some of the risk, you know, at the top, they mention climate change, and some of, and the other is like, uh, it's more about um, how the, the how it impacts the stock or the competition, or it can be related or not to the to the environment. So the first task we had to do is just to pass those uh, HTML file and we convert them into data frame. So uh, for the sake of this analysis, we turn them into pandas. Where you see the red one uh, and you can see on the, the pictures on the right one, this is the red one, you know, risk. This is where you can see uh, when on the left, this is the red, uh, a cycle in the red and on the right, you can see, you the, see the, the columns. Yeah, and uh, the blue one, this is the details. So this is paragraph. You can see uh, on the right, but in the end, we um, we cut them by sentences because uh, you know transformers cannot have a paragraph, or you know the uh, the accuracy decreases a lot. So basically, that was not a very easy task because you know it's HTML; it's not very well normalized. So we had to pre-process everything to make sure everything is uh, passed correctly. But I will not go into detail for this presentation. I will go to the, into detail for the methodology. So uh, in the next slide, <clears throat> this is uh, how we start our project. I, I, I added this slide because uh, it's very important that you read the literature review. You are all student, you are all junior, and do not skip this part. Le the literature review is very important for every project. Why? For two reasons. First of all, you can see that the researcher, uh, if the researcher have already uh, done some work about it, the methodology they used, the recommendation that they did. Uh, some of them like say, okay, well, we found this data, we have some problem, this is how we fix it. And you can also see how the, the literature evolves over time. And for a specific project, then we read the literature. So when I read literature, I mean that you need to read at least 20 to 30 papers. And this is how you do a real literature review. And you can see that the, um, the researcher have already tried to um, extract risk from financial documents and at the very beginning they started to do the naive techniques with keywords and grams or LDA which didn't perform very well and since a couple of years they use uh, embedding and more, recent, more recently transformers. So an embedding, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it but you take a word and you convert it into a vector of, sentence, uh, a vector of, of numbers. 
And then you can use, let's say, a cosine similarity between two words or two sentences to compare them and to say, yeah, if the if the cosine similarity is low, then it means there is no relation at all between these two sentences. And if the score is high, it means that these two sentences are closely related. And when we read the literature, then of course we found new techniques and we also find climate but, which is an embedding um, this is a transformer, a, a transformer train uh, model that uh, the researcher from Zurich University made public. And we also found data. And, you know, if you want to train your own model, then you need data. So at the very beginning, then we spent some time, we downloaded the data and we found four, five, uh, five data. First of all, we found the corporate climate risk disclosure which is the one that is used in the cheap talk and cherry picking uh, paper. So it's about 50,000 sentences label into four, um, um, four label. And then with another one, which is the noun, which means that the sentences is not related to climate. We have climate tags, we have climate fever, we have the task force disclosure. So the task force disclosure, I want to thank my friend Susie, which is uh, here today because she helped me to um, read, the, read the PDF. So it's like about hundred of it, hundred of them, and then she just highlight all of the sentences that mention uh, the environment. So in the end, from the task force disclosure, she managed to find six hundred sentences related to climate. And then we use um, we use another we use our personal database. So basically, every day I read the Financial Times, I read academic papers, and for the past two years, I highlighted my own sentences related to climate uh, to climate or the environment. So in the end, uh, we have like 600, uh, 60,000 uh, sentences with about 50, 15,000 uh, sentences labeled as climate risk. But we made a, a mistake when we, um, when, we, uh, when we load the data is we believe the data were correctly labeled, at least for the, four, uh, for the three first um, data set. But we were wrong because, you know, the, the researcher made the data public so we believe in it and then when we try on our own uh, data then it was a disaster so i, sh I just show you on the right some example when in the, in the training that i said we have like poorly labeled uh, sentences so you can see in one that i said the sentences the sentence was the company has taken specific action to fulfill environmental sustainability for many years in reducing carbon emission and they, they, um, they didn't, they didn't, they, they said it was a zero. It was not related to climate or, you know, another sentence is when they talk about CO2, again, it was uh, labeled as zero. And on the other hand, they mentioned like, uh, they didn't, they, they, they forgot to label uh, as climate change sentences. So for instance, if you see the second example, financial data in the report and data relating to uh, ISO quality information, safety, environmental energy management and greenhouse gas emission, they said this is not related to climate. So basically we had to spend a lot of time to uh, make uh, the data set clean. So that's why when you have data, first thing, analyze it, make sure this is correct because garbage in, garbage out. If you feed the data, if you feed the model with poorly labeled data, then your model will be like uh, very bad. So now I will show you the methodology used to uh, train our model. So this is a big pipeline. Yeah, sorry. So yeah, this is a big pipeline. So at, at the very beginning, we had to download all of the firm in the US because if you want to go to the SEC website, you need to manually input the, the firm. But we managed to download it through um, uh, a Python code, all of the listed company. This is about 63,000 companies in the US. We download all of the 10K feelings. We pass the metadata. We extracted the sentences for all of these industries. And then we clean the training data. And then uh, to make sure we can uh, assess the performance of our model, we took one industry, the, the agriculture industry. We label manually all of the main sentences if it's related to not to climate, and then we test our model. So for that, so bear in mind, we have five data set which are not included in the 10K report. And we train three different, we train two different models and one keyword, um, one keyword methodology. So first of all, we read some paper and then um, we tried a new methodology, which is, which is an improvement of the few short learner. So a few short learner is what is like you give some keyword and then the model try to um, say, okay, this is related to the keyword or not. So what we did, 
we took a bunch of sentences labeled as zero and then we related them to the sentences uh, labeled as one and then we make some shuffle and then we train uh, we train an embedding so um, it was a bird model that compared two sentences labeled as one and label as one label as zero label as zero and label as one and label as zero so that the model can see okay these sentences and these sentences are related and our purpose was to minimize the cosine similarity loss and then when we are the fine embedding, we we um, we compute a UMAP. So I don't know if you're familiar with UMAP, but UMAP is a dimension with re re dimension uh, reduction methodology where you because you know an embedding is like 500 uh, columns because we have uh, 500 plus columns from BERT, and then we want to squeeze it and keep all of the information, and then we included we 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 uh, we feed a ridge reg classifier to say, okay, this sentence is a one and this sentence is zero. This uh, methodology is good when you don't have lots of um, training data. And then we did another, uh, we trained another model that I will explain uh, shortly. This is a deep learning model uh, with a robot ending. And then we use our custom function and uh, an Adam optimizer. And we managed to get 80% um, on the F1. And then we also uh, get a keyword uh, analysis. So in the end, we have a nice model. We we feed uh, in the second part. We have those. Uh, we take an industry. We we compute the probability of a building link to class one or zero for all of these sentences, and this is our output. So, but as you can see, we have different models. In the end, we have like five models, and each model provide a probability, and then we need to make a consensus. Because if one model say yeah this is a one, another model say it's a zero. How can we how can we sure how can we be sure that in the end this is uh, a climate related or not climate related? So what we did, we trained a logistic regression on the probability and the and the true false on the keyword. On top of that, to give us a consensus. So let's say you have a sentences and we have five different models, five different probability plus two uh, boolean. We feed our logistic regression, and the logistic regression will give us the consensus. If the logistic regression say, "Yeah, this is um, above 50 percent," then we we flag it as climate related. If it's below, then we say this is not related. And then when we have our sentences, then this is uh, the first part of the job. And then we need to, for each sentences, catch the keywords, because in the end we want to know what what the sentence is what the sentence is talking about. So we use the Shapley value. So if you don't know what the Shapley value is, the Shapley value is um, a way to understand why the model makes this decision. We use key term analysis using Textasy uh, library and then we use keyword. And then on top of that, we use an embedding for all of the sentences. And then we compare them all together with the keyword, with the cosine similarity to aggregate the risk. So in the end we have, for each sentences we have, uh, a, like a top level risk and then we have all of the all of the details that I will show you in a minute so that we have a top level risk the details for all of the sentences and um, I'm going to show you just a little bit about the deep learning model that we use which is in the next step well, okay so here as uh, as I said when we went on again phase we had uh, three different models we have the BERT model the Roberta model and the climate BERT the climate was our first choice. Why? Because when we read the paper, they said, yeah, if you use unbending, then you can you can uh, use it to uh, as a downstream task to classify your sentences. So we said, yeah, good. Then we have all, the job is already done. But we tried it and we find that the model is really, really bad. So I just make you an example. So when you have your uh, your own transformers, always use your own example. You know, for fun, you type some stupid stuff and you see what how the model react. And here, I found that the word bank was like or loan was like some keywords that climate will believe it's a climate risk. And then I wrote the sentence: the bank provides loan, which is like non-related to climate, and climate will believe it's related to climate. You see the fifty percent. So this is the Shapley value, and he believed that the word loan is uh, is a flag for climate, which is uh, 
not the case. And then when we look at the data, because you know when your model performs very well, always look at your data. So I look at the data and I found that among 510 occurrences, 50% of like more than 50% were labeled as one. So that's why the model say, okay, I see loan, I tag it as label as a uh, climate. Here I, I show you some example at the bottom. You see all of these four sentences, the first two it's like label as non-climate and the last two is related to as climate. So that's why the model was not understanding very well why um, not understanding very well the sentences. So we had very strong doubt about climate birds. And um, we decided to just drop it at all because we don't think this is a very good embedding to detect climate. So all, so my, my, my recommendation is never believe what you find on Hugging Face because this is not peer reviewed and you don't really know how they came up with the, with the model. So always do your own job on when you really believe, it, believe in it, always test it. And then that's why we move to the next part to train our, or to fine tune our own model, which is the next, the next slide. So how we did it, um, as I said, we, we believe that the data were not very good, so we had to clean it. And here I show you how we, the methodology we use to clean it. We perform a key square analysis. So if you're not familiar with key square analysis, um, a key square analysis is just, you want to know if two categories are related or not. So here we took all of, we, we compute the key score analysis on all of the corpus and we wanted to see if there is some word that appears on both label zero and label one. And if they appears on both sides, it means that it's gonna be, it's gonna give a hard time to the model to really distinguish those words. So if you see at the top, there is carbon. And uh, here I'm sure that um, this is completely not related. So we can find carbon is mostly on the, on the risk section and not on the risk section. And you can see it from the person residual. When the person residual is very high, it means this is not related. And we we see that there is some word that have some ambiguity that we found on both uh, on both uh, section. You can see it from GHG, which means greenhouse gases. You find them on both section, or you know there is like research on both on label and non-label. So we made um, we we found that one of the data set has some sentences which were very similar, but belong on the same label. So what we did, we compute an embedding for all of the sentences and we compare them with, uh, we took all of the sentences from the label one and we compare them with all of the sentences in label zero. And when the score, the question similarity score were too close, then we just decided to drop the, to drop the, the sentences at all. So we clean this data set like this and uh, to train our model, we decided to remove all of the labeled one from the CCRD data set because we didn't believe that the, um, the, the CCRD data set with the label one were good enough. So we decided it includes too much noise in the data. So we decided to remove it at all. So we, we lose a lot of sentences labeled as one, but we managed to improve a lot or um, or accuracy and then we decide we, we we train a model that prevent overfitting so we make a truncation of 100 to make sure long sentences uh, are cut we made a padding we make a dropout of percent so you know with again phase you can uh, you can easily param parameterize your model we make a custom loss function why because uh, it's not 50 50 it's 50 50 yeah. we had like 20 percent uh climate risk in the trend that in the in the data set and 80% of non climate uh, risk so we had to we had to change the loss function we increased the batch size to 24 with adam weight and weight decay to make sure that the, the model does not overfit too much and then we improve our f1 uh, we increase our f1 but also we make sure that our model is stable on the 10k report and we did it was like way more stable than before and you can see it from uh from the shapley value I, I put the same sentences same sentence as before the bank provide loan and as you can see now the model is pretty sure this is not related to climate but on the other hand the second example you know government across the world that have placed the cost on carbon emission blah 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 then the model is pretty sure that this is related to climate change. Why? Because there is more like carbon, global warming that makes that gives him 
some hint that is related to climate. So this is how we did um, our, our model to extract the sentences. And then now we just need to analyze it, which is the last step, the last step. So um, it, you remember in the first uh, in the first step we need to um, we need to get a probability if a sentence is related to climate or not. So you see we have like uh, our business is subject to risk et, and so on and so on. We found that uh, there is a keyword you know search zero search one means there is some keywords related to climate. We have the probability of the bird uh, bird climate but it's not bird climate. Uh, I've just forgot to rename it, but this is our model. The model is shown at 99%. This is related to climate, and then we train the um, we train the logistic regression. We get a consensus of 97%. So we extract this sentence, and it's going to be um, a candidate for uh, the score. So how we did it to extract the score? Then we did the keyword analysis. We compute we computed the Shapley value and extract them, and use text as it. This is the second picture. You see in the sentence. Um, our business is subject to the risk of earthquakes, fire, flood, and so on. We have the keywords earthquake, flood, from the text as we have catastrophic natural event, security breach, crop loss. From the Shapley value, we have earthquakes, flood, catastrophic natural. And then in the end, uh, we use another model to extract the top level, um, to extract the top level risk. And our model said, okay, uh, when you have those keywords, then the the, the main risk is natural disaster and the details is earthquake flood natural event so in after that we can make some graph analysis we can see that natural disaster is correlated with earthquake flood natural event and we can also correlate the other risk all together so for the agricultural industry we have 50 case sentences we from 50 companies in the us we extracted 700 sentences and then we found that the top the main concern the company have in this industry is about regulation. Like 83% of the firm mentioned regulation as uh, environmental regulation as the main risk they're going to face in the, in, the, in the coming years about uh, climate change. And we also find the weather. So when we have weather, whether it's like flood, it's, um, uh, it's all risk related to the weather, natural uh, natural uh, weather, and 60% of them believe that it's going to impact their business in the short run. And then we have pollution, climate change. So this is how we did our analysis. You see from 10K report freely available on the internet to this table where we can score and assess the main risk faced by every industries in the US over the past uh, uh, three years. So that's all for me.